the new U.S. president is probably none too pleased that Germany exports a lot more than it imports and has done so for decades. In 2016, Germany's trade surplus equaled 7.7 percent of the country's GDP. In Trump's world, one country's surplus equals another country's deficits, and deficits mean less production, slower economic activity, and job loss in those countries. Consider trade between Germany and the United States. German exports to the U.S. keep growing year on year, especially machines, cars, and pharmaceuticals. Sales in the other direction are worth just half as much. Between January and November last year, Germany sold 56 billion euros more to the U.S. than it bought. That makes the U.S. Germany's biggest export market. About a million German jobs are estimated to depend on it. The European Union doesn't like the trade surplus either. EU agreements allow for a maximum of just 6% of GDP. In fact, one of the union's governing bodies, the EU Commission, should begin proceedings against Germany to stop it. But the Commission doesn't want to antagonize Germany and has delayed so far. And Germany isn't taking steps to reduce the surplus. On the contrary, manufacturers are balking at renewed employee wage demands so that German companies remain competitive in international markets. Businesses and manufacturers have no intention of reducing exports. Economic pressure to maintain a trade surplus is strong, given that Germany offers a wide range of goods that are in demand worldwide. At the same time, Germany is doing nothing to increase imports. Compared to other countries, the government is not investing much in infrastructure. Experience shows that more investment would boost imports and reduce surplus. None of this interests the new U.S. president. Trump wants to force German companies like BMW to produce their products in the U.S. if they want to continue to sell there. <laughs>